Hey guys, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Before we dive into today's episode, I would absolutely love if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, going ahead and giving this video a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. It really helps our channel. And if you're listening to this on your preferred podcast platform, then if you could go ahead and give us a rating, it shouldn't take more than five minutes. And again, it really helps us out and we always appreciate the feedback, but we'll go ahead and dive into things. And if you have been listening along, You know that this is part three in a three-part series, being able to go over all things postpartum with Katie Clementi, Coach Katie, Physique Development's very own. So we'll go ahead and dive in. And just to recap very shortly, the first episode was talking about some different lifestyle factors that you can do postpartum to really help you out. Part two was going over training considerations and a lot of really helpful information. And part three is now going over nutrition. And as I mentioned in the last episode, if you guys have follow-up questions or further questions, then please get them over to us so that we can do a wrap-up episode if needed to get you everything that you need in your postpartum journey. So Katie, we're back at it again. Part three, nutrition. Are you ready for this? We're ready. Let's do it then. (laughs) Let's go ahead and get started. We have had a lot of incredible conversation around postpartum. I think we've shared a lot of really helpful information uh, and now getting to the nuts and bolts of nutrition and making sure that you're supporting your body postpartum. So what are the biggest things that you see people do or should I say not do when it comes to postpartum and their nutrition? So we'll start with what I see people not doing and kind of how we work through that and fixing them, whether it be like friends, clients, what have you. Um, One of the most common things I will see, which makes me kind of sad, but also their feelings are valid, but they're just not eating enough. So they're so set on already losing their baby weight, feeling better. They're convinced that they've got to start losing weight. Like as soon as they push a baby out of their body and then they're instantly just not eating enough, or it's the flip side to where they're coming to the terms that their life is much more busy. And then they don't have time to just sit down and eat meals like they did while they were pregnant or prior to baby. Um, so that is my biggest thing that I see too much is just women not eating enough But in reality, you still need to make sure you're eating enough calories. And in some cases, maybe a little bit more, depending on if you're breastfeeding or not, and to just help your body recover and heal. And if you've listened to the last few episodes, you'll hear Sue and I repeatedly say that this is a trauma to your body. You have to take time to heal and recover. So not only before you start training and stuff, but just from the inside out. And nutrition is going to be one of the most important factors that goes into that. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned the reasons why people need to be eating more because those uh, situations that you mentioned of being in a place where you want to lose the baby weight or you're getting really busy, which are both very understandable of those wanting to be your goal of losing the baby weight or you are just extremely busy. But this is another way you have to pour into yourself and are pouring into the baby. And what we're going to mention here a little bit more is being able to talk about milk supply and why it's important to ensure that you are in a good spot calorically. Uh, But being able to say that this is for recovery reasons. And I even find this with clients um, that aren't pregnant of just getting to that place of realizing that eating more doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to gain weight. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad to eat more, which I know, especially as women, we have to reprogram that and remember that food is our friend here. Yes, it is fuel, but it's so much more than fuel. It's memories, it's moments, it's enjoyment. It's so much more than just fuel, but it is also fuel. And we do need that to help recover and to propel us forward. Exactly. So that's just something that I always just reiterate with people. And like you said, I mean, your feelings are valid with wanting to lose weight and the reason of you being so busy and things like that, like those are all just so valid, but it's where you make yourself a priority set aside like 30 minutes to make sure you can make like two quick simple meals and just get something in. So that way you're not also exhausted and crabby and things like that when you're trying to take care of a new baby too. It's huge. Um, Another thing that I always like to talk about in regards to nutrition is it's sometimes very common to just start eating out a ton postpartum. And I'm going to speak on this because 
it's convenient. So a lot of people like make you food. A lot of people will send you gift cards to like Uber Eats or whatever. And that's great. Um, but it's also important to make sure we're eating things that are high in nutrients. So this is where it's going to come back to like consistency is key or like the 80, 20 rule. I like to tell people a lot of the time is yes. If you know that you haven't eaten in like six hours, order whatever you need to order and just get some damn calories in. But on the flip side, when you have another meal later or what have, you make sure that we're getting like some vegetables, some fruits, some good healthy fats, proteins, um, because once again, calories are just important as a whole, but also the types of calories that you're getting in too. So when we say make sure you're eating calories, we're not saying just like order whatever from wherever all the time, but still be mindful and thoughtful to how you're treating yourself too. Yeah. And with that, what are some examples of some quick and easy meals that maybe you made or you suggest to clients to be able to have in place? Because like you said, it is so freaking convenient to eat out or to order food in. And so when it comes to, okay, I'm now busier, I have this other human I have to take care of when it comes to meal prep, probably not a top priority. So what did it look like for being able to get in food or some quick and easy options that are still going to be filled with nutrients? Yes. Yeah, so when from Speaking on my own postpartum experience, I knew that before I went into labor, thankfully, like I had an induction, so I could plan a little bit more. This won't be the case for everyone, but I made sure I had food prepped and in the freezer. So that way, when I came home, I was like, all right, I at least have like bulk proteins done and things like that, which once again, I know some people will go into spontaneous labor. But on the flip side, if that's your case, some quick things that I did were just making like egg cups out of little muffin tins. You just throw eggs and beat them together and then like onions, peppers, bake them for a little bit. And there's breakfast for a few days. Um, bulk meats is what we prepped. I would have Zach just in the kitchen cooking for like 20 minutes. Thankfully he did. It wasn't always the best, but it's better than nothing. I appreciated it. And then also just speaking and communicating to those who will be bringing you food. Obviously you don't want to be picky and you want to be very appreciative, but kind of just saying like, Hey, could we do maybe something with more vegetables? Or if you have to order our out, one thing that we like to order a lot of was just Chick-fil-A because it was convenient. So we would get like the grilled nuggets, the salads, and then the occasional French fries, or we do like a vegetable based Chipotle bowl. So things like that were just quick easy and just always trying to have things bulk prepared that you can just pull from um, and setting aside that time to do so, which I know it can be hard, but having someone and communicating those needs to someone who may be coming to help you postpartum and maybe they can just do it for you goes a long way. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that, especially since we talked about in the prior two episodes of being able to ask for help. And when people offer to bring stuff, I understand not wanting to be picky or overbearing, but I think that's the perfect way for you to speak up for yourself. If someone says, what can I bring? I'd love to bring some meals of saying, hey, I would love that. It would actually really help if you just brought some grilled chicken or something to that degree where you're not asking someone to do over and beyond what they have already offered offered to do, you are just asking it more in line with what is truly going to help you because no one likes wasting food or the process of wasted food. So any way we can kind of sidestep that is best. I'm also going to go through some different things that are going to be quick when you can't meal prep of some go-to. So these aren't always going to be the most budget friendly because they are going to be more based on quickness. Um, and we're going for the convenience of that quickness, but I'm going to go ahead and list through some of these. So microwave rice, super duper easy one to be able to just pop in the microwave and have ready to go. I will say though, having a rice cooker is a game changer. And if you need to know more on that, then I'll go ahead and link the YouTube video where I talk about my favorite kitchen appliances, um, but pre-made protein. So if you can't cook protein in bulk, being able to buy it in bulk. So there's going to be stores, places like Whole Foods that are going to be able to have just grilled chicken breasts that you can buy in bulk that they've made semi-fresh. But if not, frozen is going to be just fine to be able to go forward with. So Tyson has some frozen options as well as refrigerated options for just grilled chicken, and those are going to be great in a pinch. Rotisserie chicken is another great one because you can just grab this from the grocery store and have some bulk protein prepped and ready to go, and it's normally delicious as well. Um, Pre-shredded chicken, so stores like Fresh Time, 
And sprouts have this in their deli section. Um, and you can just go ahead and grab just the chicken that they've just pre-shredded, again, semi-recently, so that it's all good to go. Uh, rice cakes are going to be a really easy carb source to be able to grab. And there's lots of flavors. And you can kind of like pimp out your rice cake um, and pile on some different stuff to make it more of a meal if you need it to be. Uh, but I understand it is not itself a meal. Um, tuna packets, if you like tuna, are going to be a great option option or like canned chicken. Um, again, just something quick and easy to be able to grab and go. Um, and then exactly what Katie mentioned of having some things ready in the freezer. So even if you are not inducing and it is going to be more of a spontaneous birth, you still likely know that you are pregnant. And so even so being able to think, hey, I'm about a month away or two months away from my due date, I'm going to go ahead and have some stuff in the freezer because most stuff in the freezer is going to last three to six plus months. And so so this is something that I recommend for a lot of clients, whether they're traveling and so they have something when they come back or an instance where you know, hey, I'm not going to have the most time or availability to make food. I'm going to have some things in the freezer so that I am good to go. And that's another thing of just going up and down the freezer aisle. Maybe that's a fun pregnancy trip that you take with your, your spouse or a friend of just walking up and down the aisles at Kroger or whatever grocery store you go to and going up and down the freezer aisle and seeing not only do they have have veggies and meats and carb sources. They also have like, um, this is a veggie, but the bird's eye blend. They have like a Southwest blend that has some higher protein. So you can use that. Um, if you're wanting to know how to use some more frozen vegetables, I'll have another video linked down below on how to make sure that you're getting in micronutrients and enjoying it. And I go through what Alex and I do for getting in vegetables and fruits. Um, and then being able to have something easy like eggs is always going to be great. Um, that's going to be a pretty simple go-to that you can just be able to use eggs, being able to use oatmeal. Yogurt's another great one, especially yogurt shakes. I know even if you are lactose intolerant, um, Chobani Complete, even though they've discontinued like the regular yogurt, which I have no idea why, I, they I still have, the, it makes no sense. They still have the yogurt shakes and those are 25 grams of protein for the shakes. And they have a few different flavors like vanilla, berry. They have a banana one, a strawberry one. Um, I know they at least have those four. So those are 25 grams of protein and those are just ready to drink as well as ready to drink protein shakes or protein shakes in general. So that was a big list of some pretty easy, quick options that you can still get. And they are honestly going to be um, in line with the pricing or the convenience of going out to eat. So being able to have those in your back pocket are going to be really, really helpful. I agree 100%. I don't know why I didn't think any of that stuff, but I have all those in my cupboard. So, hey, you know, sometimes you just are thinking about the other aspects, which I think what you brought up was extremely helpful. So that's why we do these together. We can build off of one another um, and make sure that we're helping people. And again, it's all about consistency and not perfection. So it wasn't perfect, but we're, we're getting that consistency in place. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly, no worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box, and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So can't wait to hear how much you love it. Um, so I absolutely love that you brought up that as far as speaking to people and really being able to say what you want. Now, when it comes to tracking, I know we've mentioned it um, in another episode of we don't always have our new moms or even if you're not a new mom, but new mom, as in you just gave birth to another baby, um, then we talk about what it looks like for tracking. And we don't always have those clients immediately start tracking their food. So what does that normally look like for clients? Um, or what did that look like for you? Um, so in regards to tracking postpartum, I was not someone who tracked my food at all. I still have it in a very long time. Um, but I spent a long time tracking my food, like five plus years. So, um, but being postpartum, I like to either just create my meals based upon the knowledge that I have prior. And then I'll share that too. And then also using something that's called the hand portioning method. Um, so I'll speak on the hand portioning method in case you guys have never heard of that, but it's something to where you can use your hand to portion out your food. So you could use your hand to portion out like cooked protein. I believe that's like the palm and then a cupped 
hand is like cooked carbohydrates. Fats will be like your thumb. And that's something that's super simple to at least try and keep your portion sizes maybe consistent. Um, and that way you're not just like throwing things on your plate and wondering why maybe you're not progressing or what have you. Or maybe in the flip side, if you're doing that and you're not eating enough to let's say support your breast milk or something, you could maybe like double it using your hands too but it's cutting down the time and what you might be spending like in my fitness pal or something like that. Cause some people do find um, my fitness pal to be tedious and what have you. So I just like to work with whoever on what they prefer postpartum and what they found easier because you just want to set yourself up for success. So if you know that you are not going to have the mental capacity, to just pre-plan your meals, put them in my fitness pal or what have you, then that's okay. And we can find something else that will work for you. So that's why I like to recommend the hand method too. Um, and the second one will be just looking at a plate and creating your meals based upon using things like starting with protein and then vegetables and then like another like starchy carb or what have you. Um, that will help you to really focus on like the protein and the nutrients side of the meal first and then the carbs kind of being last. But that's not saying that carbs are bad, carbs are energy, but it is teaching you to kind of set your mindset towards focusing on like protein and nutrients first and then whatever ends up on your plate last. So that's the two things that I like to go to. And I will say that carbs and fats are the easiest to get in um, when you are not planning things versus protein and nutrients are the hardest to get in. So by no means are either of us demonizing carbs or fat, but really being able to take a look at, like if I'm traveling, if I go and I need to grab food someplace, carbs and fats, freaking easy. Then it's like, easy. where the frick <laughs> is the protein and where are the nutrients? So it can be something of being able to just prioritize that of the protein and the vegetables because it's going to be pretty easy to grab the other things or have snacks that are going to be very much so geared towards that. Exactly. Yeah. So when we are looking at postpartum and the milk supply, what does that look like for their calorie allotment? Um, what does it look like for their water intake? What are things that women need to be aware of when it comes to their supply? So when it comes to milk supply and just eating enough, drinking enough water and things like that, I always start with water. Um, let's say however much you're drinking and you think you're drinking enough, let's just try and double it because you need water first and foremost to produce breast milk. Obviously, like some electrolytes and things like that will help too, like some hydration products or you could use, um, there have some supplements or I just personally loved body armors or coconut water when I was breastfeeding. They tasted good. It was something different than water and I could just grab one out of the fridge and go. Um, or they have a few different brands. I think like Element is one mm -hmm. um, that's really just like powder. Yeah, they're so good too. So you could do that. Um, and then in regards to food, so you want to make sure that you're getting at least we start with like an extra 400 calories um, and you always start there. So depending on your production, you want to times, I think it's like 150 by however many ounces that you're making. So it's 150 per four ounces and then you start there. So however many, like let's say you're pumping and you get like eight ounces total, you would do the math and say, okay, this is how many calories I burned producing the milk. And that's the one time that we want to put back calories that you're burning um, to make sure that your body can keep up with that supply. Because if not, if you're burning those calories producing the milk um, and you're not feeding yourself to put those back in, your production may slow down because it's hard work on your body to or produce breast milk. Completely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So your breast milk can be so, so sensitive. I remember a few times where there was like three days where I just was not getting food in because God knows what. And I instantly had like a mental breakdown because my breast milk like plummeted, mm -hmm. but I was able to drink enough water and eat more food the next few days and I was fine. But things can just happen so quickly that if you're not careful and not paying attention to how much you're eating, I've seen a lot of moms just get super frustrated, can't figure out why their milk supply will stay up, but then they come to the realization that they're just so focused on losing fat, losing weight, that they're almost making eating less calories more of a priority than their breast milk. So it's always so important to make sure that you're eating enough. Once again. <laughs> 
Yeah. So with that, when you have clients or just people in your life that are really prioritizing that weight loss, what are some things that you either talk to them about or ways that you reframe what the focus needs to be during this time frame? Because as we've mentioned throughout this series, it's hard on the mom, not only during the pregnancy, after the pregnancy, everything in between, um, what your body goes through, what your mind goes through, what the outside society puts you through. There is so, so, so much. And we talk about that concept of bouncing back. And I get it of just wanting to be in the place of I want to look like my body used to. And we talked about within the last uh, episode of training of your body is basically a new body. So how do you really phrase that or talk about that with clients to showcase that weight loss is going to be a byproduct right now, but it's not going to be the immediate goal at this second? Yeah, and that's exactly it. So just reiterating, like, I know that the long-term goal of yours, if I'm speaking to a client or whoever, I know the long-term goal of yours is to lose fat and to feel good in your body again. But right now we need to focus on X, Y, and Z first. And then the weight loss will just happen slowly over time in most cases. So I like to really just almost flip the script and say, hey, for now, these X amount of months, we're solely focusing on feeding yourself Food is fuel, the nutrient dense foods, all of that. And then also just rehabbing your body, you getting into a good routine, you getting used to being a mom. And then maybe after a few months, we focus on, okay, now we're going to focus on just increasing strength in the gym. Once we're fully recovered, fully here, we're back in the gym. And now we're just going to focus on eating enough, getting some nutrient dense food again, and just kicking ass in the gym for as long as we can, because at the end of the day, with the hormones that you have, like with your prolactin and your progesterone and your estrogen while you're breastfeeding, you may not lose all the body fat that you want to lose while you're breastfeeding. And that's just how it is. Some women do. That's great. Not everyone is the same. I know for me personally, I didn't continue seeing shifts in my physique until I stopped breastfeeding. And that's okay. I mean, it sucked. I was pissed, but that's all right. (laughs) And that's just part of it. So I really like to prioritize like, okay, first few months is all about recovery, getting into a good routine. And then once we do get into the gym, we're going to focus on form, learning movement patterns again, increasing strength, and then keeping their milk supply up during that time too. And eventually the time will come where we'll be weaning from breastfeeding and changing food to go along with that. And then we can focus on fat loss in an even deeper sense. Yeah. So I know that a lot of times you hear the term uh, that you're eating for two during pregnancy. So what do you really talk about when it comes to your clients um, for that thought process? And then I'll talk or have you talk about that transition of where someone would go immediately postpartum when it comes to food and if they are or aren't breastfeeding. Because we've already mentioned that you would want to start with that threshold of 400 extra calories. But we'll talk about where that baseline is from, especially after Katie answers this. So when it comes to the term eating for two during pregnancy, um, you're not necessarily like eating for two, but there are senses to where we're increasing calories and just being mindful of that once again. So throughout your first trimester, you really don't have to change much in regards to training or food and things like that. You don't have to increase calories too much. Um, The biggest thing is just managing any nausea that you might have and you're probably just feeling very tired. Um, So doing some things to focus on that is something that I prioritize like eating crackers, things like that, just simple fixes there. Um, But in your second trimester, you actually only need about 150 to 200 calories extra. So the term eating for two was something that like really just made me mad, just really grinds my gears because in a sense, I kind of understand why people may say that, but it also is giving people kind of like an okay to just eat a ton because they're pregnant, which I of course ate some things and some extra food. And I was like, you know what? I'm pregnant. I deserve this, which you do. You deserve <laughs> you do. whatever you're you want when you're pregnant. Being. You're good to exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> right. So n- no sense am I saying like, don't eat because I am, but just being mindful and setting yourself up for success postpartum is going to be just limiting like, okay, I only need like an extra 200 calories. And that's really not that much. That's maybe like three rice cakes sometimes, just Mm -hmm. depends on the kind. Um, And then in your third trimester, depending on like size of baby and stuff, but it's usually only about like a 300 calorie increase that you have to do. Um, Now, this isn't going to be just a random 300 calories. You want it to be like 
Good fats is always what I focused on, um, but just following those terms throughout your pregnancy will set you up for a huge success postpartum. And then you kind of know already like where your calories are at. So working with clients throughout their pregnancy is so nice once I work with them postpartum too, because I have all the data already. Like we spoke about in training, I knew exactly where they were like heading into labor. I knew exactly how things were going already. Same in regards to nutrition. If I had someone tracking their food and they're at X amount of calories, calories going in to give birth and then their postpartum. We can start wherever, depending on if they're going to breastfeed, we add calories. If not, we can kind of just use their baseline for a little bit and then get things going from there. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like in terms of eating from two and why we don't necessarily have to. Yeah. And I love that you brought this up because I think that a lot of times people get pregnant and they think, oh, I'm going to hire a co coach after I'm done giving birth and they'll be able to help me postpartum. And they definitely can and Katie definitely can. But it does help to have that help and that accountability throughout pregnancy so that you have a good starting point or a good baseline for postpartum. Because if you don't track any of what you eat during pregnancy, then it's going to be really hard to figure out, okay, what's 400 more calories from where my baseline is? And that's going to make it even harder, not only mentally, but physically being able to accomplish your goals. And not that your main goal should be weight loss postpartum. That's not what I'm saying, but I understand it is a lot of women's main goal postpartum. And so to set you up for success for that, you not only should be eating enough throughout pregnancy and supporting your body in that way, but knowing what enough is. So then postpartum, you can make some very um, intelligent decisions instead of just kind of throwing something at a wall. And so it can be extremely helpful to have a coach throughout pregnancy, making sure that everything's in line where it should be in tandem with your doctor so that you're able to go into postpartum and be in a really solid spot. So then when we look at that, we have the 150-ish calories for the second trimester, the 300 calories going into the third trimester, and then if you are breastfeeding postpartum, that would be adding 400 more calories to that. But if you aren't breastfeeding postpartum, then what does that process look like? Are you just staying at that 300 calorie increase from the third trimester or what does that look like? So for the first few weeks, if a client is ready to just keep tracking, I do just like to keep things where they are. Because once again, even though that is technically maybe a surplus from being in the third trimester, um, your body's healing and it needs food to heal. It needs food to recover. So I'm not one to just drop calories right away just because you're not breastfeeding. Um, and if you're already used to consuming a consistent amount day after day, it's probably going to be a little bit easier. Not always, but it could be a little bit easier easier for you to get back into tracking, to get back in that routine of eating, if you're anyone like Sue and I, just the same meals again. Mm -hmm. So rather than going home, changing your schedule, getting used to a new baby, and then also changing your meals around, mm -hmm. I just like to keep things the same for a bit. And then seeing how things go, where energy levels are at, all of that stuff. And then we can decrease slowly and accordingly as well. Yeah. And I think that's great to mention as far as the consistent meals that we have in place. And I even mentioned this with clients or within their training program. That if I know that they're going through a lot of other change in their life, I might keep them in a training pro program longer because they're just used to those exercises and it's going to be one less thing to change around or to learn within their schedule. And same when it comes to food of I'm either going to keep your macros the same or I'm not going to change them too much so that you can keep that same base of foods. And within Katie saying that she hasn't tracked for a long time, I'm sure there's days where she is probably eating the same things if she were to track, but it's just copying the meals over. And that's what I find myself doing now post-competition is that I'm not always tracking all of my food every day in my fitness pal like I used to, but now it's just I ate the exact same thing as yesterday, so I, I hit my macros again. Um, but I didn't have to track it because it was all already made and measured out, and then we're good to good to go from there. So any way that you can kind of take these little nuggets to set yourself up for success, that's what you want to be able to grab out of this of, okay, if I just can keep the meals the same, that's going to help with consistency and I don't have to worry about losing weight or how many less calories this is. I just need to do this for another month and then I can figure out what the change is from there. Um, that's going to set you up for a lot more success than trying to change around everything plus thinking that you're going to go immediately into a strong deficit and 
like your body is going to heal immediately as well. Because even if you listen to the podcast episode where we talked about what Alex and I did after we were sick, that was that felt like a long time, even though it was like two weeks that we were sick. And then it was like two weeks to recover from it. Obviously, pregnancy and postpartum is much longer than that. But even then, I was kind of chomping at the bit of like, let's go ahead. Let's hit training hard. Let's go and do this. And I had to remind myself, like, you just have to do the same thing and you have to do less for a couple of weeks until you can get in there and do more. And that experience, because it was so much more than I had experienced with them being sick in the past, was helpful for me to just be in the mindset of a client that maybe they're in that place where they're like, let's go. And it's like, I get it, but let's stay so that we can go instead of going and then kind of crashing because we went way too fast. Yeah. And that's, I like that you said that because one thing that I learned and heard and always reiterate to my clients who are just postpartum in regards to like training or nutrition, or just maybe they're not feeling the way they should think they should feel like their strength isn't back or their body isn't where it want to be. And I always am like, be intentional with what you're doing now. And then we can focus on the intensity of it later. So like be intentional with your training and you'll be intense as fuck with that later. And like be intentional with tracking your food and feeling yourself now. Then we get to that deficit when we're actually ready, we can be intense as fuck and just get after it. So yeah, I, sure I love that. that so much. <laughs> Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look new for Further, Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Um, so is there anything when it comes to vitamins and nutrients that people need to be aware of postpartum, certain nutrients that are depleted faster, whether it's through breastfeeding or what does that look like? So a few things that I always like to keep in mind is first off, always recommending to stay on your prenatal and your fish oil postpartum, especially if you're not done with it, perfect. Like finish it out and then maybe an extra month after is going to be great. Making sure that your iron levels are still high. Um, calcium can get depleted while you're breastfeeding. And in some cases, that can um, affect your bone density. So that's always something you really want to be mindful of. A lot of people are like, well, I'm not pregnant, so I'm not going to take my prenatal. I'm like, please keep taking it um, because all of these things are considered in the people who are making that prenatal. And then fish oil is a big one too. Um, it's always important, but really important during pregnancy, just creating another human. It's good for eye and brain of not only mom, but baby too within the fetus. Um, and then postpartum, the same thing there. And those are just my like biggest, biggest ones. I know vitamin A is super important as well. Um, and that's something to where you don't want to get too much of. Well, that's with any vitamin, but vitamin A is very important too. A folate, a B vitamins, um, lots of things, just lots of nutrients. <laughs> I'll add magnesium to that. Um, while it is an electrolyte as well as calcium is, when we're looking at magnesium, it's going to be something that most adults are already deficient in, and it's easily depleted by stress. And even though, yes, we love our babies and we're so thankful that we're able to be pregnant and be moms, and please realize that anytime a mom complains doesn't mean that she is ungrateful for the experience <laughs> or for their children. But what I will say is that it is still a stress on your body and it can be on your mind. And again, you're recovering from a trauma. And so having that magnesium in place is going to help with your digestion. It's also going to help within just having balanced electrolytes and feeling your absolute best in that regard. So being able to throw magnesium in with those uh, great vitamins and supplements that Katie has already mentioned. Uh, so other things that when it comes to nutrition, I know that there's a lot of gimmicks out there. What all, <laughs> what all is there that you would like to talk about in that regard? So I, oh, maybe not as much frequently, but if you're scrolling Instagram and you say like lose weight fast or all these things, like, or you see like a pretty pink protein powder and stuff <laughs> like this that are targeted specifically towards women. This is something that's always just like made me mad. I used to sell <laughs> supplements growing up and I'd be like, this is so stupid, but being postpartum, I kind of even was like, oh shit, like it's going to make me lose this baby weight so fast. And I was like, no, Katie, like it's not, it's just another protein powder. Um, but those are just things that I like to kind of speak to clients on too. Like, okay, don't 
give in to like these supplements that claim certain things. And I mean, if you're breastfeeding, once again, you still can't take many supplements anyway. But um, the things that have a pretty pink label that claim that they're like specifically targeted for women or like protein just for women, like that doesn't exist. Like protein is protein. <laughs> like a chicken breast is a chicken breast. Um, so just chicken those for are- women. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, let's not do this. <laughs> and all of like, the lose weight fast things that you see on Instagram, or if someone is claiming that you'll bounce back from your baby in six weeks, they, they're probably lying. I mean, maybe you will. Um, but all of those things I just always warn clients about and just warn my friends about like, Hey, don't give into it. And for one, it's just not good for your body to try and do that. Like we keep saying, you want to take time to heal, recover, fuel yourself, eat nutrient dense foods before even looking at that. Um, and just don't waste your money. <laughs> yes, don't waste your money or your time in the long run because you spent time using this product when you could have just been prioritizing the things that we've talked about and set yourself up in a really positive way. So that was a lot slash all of what we have to talk about when it comes to nutrition and postpartum. But Katie, is there anything that we've missed out on that you really want to speak towards or something that you see in your check-ins or you hear from scrolling social media when it comes to postpartum, when it comes to nutrition that you want to be able to speak on or be able to refute or anything like that? Um, one point that I didn't add is the cravings or just like the desire to eat like sugary foods or quote unquote bad foods is something that I see a lot from moms postpartum. Cause not only are you stressed, you probably are just like, Oh, I should just grab that because I haven't eaten whatever in however many a time. And a lot of times that will happen to my clients or friends or what have you. And then they come to me and they're like, I just, I just feel terrible. I shouldn't have eaten like this cookie or I shouldn't have grabbed this or I shouldn't have grabbed that. But in reality, once again, it's all about consistency um, and not letting yourself feel guilty about like the one cookie that you ate instead of tracking your macros is something that's just going to add more stress to you in the long run. Um, and I'm more of a coach that like if it already happened, it already happened. And we just can't focus on it. Today's a new day. Your next meal is the next meal. Um, and it's not the end of the world, especially going through postpartum. So I don't know. That's just something I've been seeing a lot lately of new moms just feeling just like they've lost all of their progress because they had like more desserts or something like that. Um, but just reminding yourself that consistency is key. And if you want a cupcake, just eat the cupcake. Like yeah, it will be okay. Eat the freaking cupcake. <laughs> I promise. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much, Katie. This was so helpful. And like I mentioned at the beginning, of this episode. If you have further questions on nutrition, training, or lifestyle factors, then please leave them below if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go ahead and shoot us a message so that we can get back to those um, and make sure that you guys are all set to go postpartum. I know that this is something that Coach Katie is extremely passionate about, and I am as well when it comes to just being able to serve women and being able to really empower women I know within physique development of our tagline, train, educate, and empower. And that's what a lot of this episode was of educating and empowering this whole series of ensuring that you know that it's not just about weight loss postpartum. You shouldn't have to think about just bouncing back. And you should really be able to prioritize yourself and your body healing and being able to take care of everyone, including yourself. And you are at the top of that list because you cannot pour from an empty cup at all. So being able to speak up for yourself being able to set your boundaries, being able to ask for help and speak up when you are struggling, and then also being able to have that intention, like Katie mentioned, so we can rip, ramp up that intensity later on. But thank you guys so much for listening and following along with this series. And thank you, K- Coach Katie, so much for adding so wonderfully to this series um, and being a part of it. And we'll catch you in the next episode.